this clip, I'm going to show you how to wire up five wire door locking systems with two relays. Here in my hand, I have two standard single pole double throw relays. I have five pins on the bottom, as you can see, and I also am using an Omega five wire relay socket. So I'm going to plug those two in. S same thing, identical. Now what I'm, what I'm going to do, and what I suggest you or anybody, whoever does this job does, just for neatness sake, is to put these two together. Keep them side by side. So when you're ready to mount them, you could use your wire ties, or you could take a self-tapping screw and screw them in. Nice. You should always keep a relay in this position. Believe it or not, gravity actually affects a, a relay, which is an electromagnetic switch. So, here's how we do it. I'm not going to il illustrate the numbers of the pins because it just will probably cause more confusion for you for that than anything. So, what I'm going to rely on is this cheat sheet right here. All these colors correspond to what I have here in my hand. So, if you follow the colors, it'll tell you. For instance, green 87, blue is 86, and of course, there's a picture of the bottom of the relay as well. So. It should help you out enough. And if you get lost, you can always stop, pause, go back, and take a look at it again. So these relays, the purpose of these relays um, is not used uh, very commonly anymore. Most of the newer cars are all controlled by body control modules, computers, etc. So you don't really use this anymore. But if you do have an older car, an older GM, an older Ford, um, even some Dodges use them, you know, you're going to need to know how to do this. Now, basically, you need to find, of course, the target wires in your car. So if you were to, say for instance, if you had a Ford Taurus, pretty popular car. If you go into the driver door boot or if you pull out the switch, you're going to see on the bottom of the switches that you're going to find two really heavy wires, which are typically about a 12 gauge. Look something like this, actually maybe even a little bit more heavier. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty beefy. Um, those wires need to actually be cut and then you need to wire up these relays in series, meaning that you would have to cut the wire and you would have to put these in line through the relay for these to work. So, what you're going to do is keep these two blue wires. These are going to be the negative outputs either from your alarm or your switch, whatever it is that you're doing. If you're repairing your door lock switch, you would use, of course, the switches. If you're using a car alarm, or remote starter, or something like that, you're going to use these as the negative outputs from your car alarm. So, we're just going to leave those here for time being. These black wires are the opposite side of the coil. These need to be opposing polarity to click the relay to do the job. So these you're going to put together. You're going to do the same thing with the greens. Okay, so once you've got your two greens together, you have your two blacks together, you can join those. That's that. Okay, so we got our input, we got our power supply for the relay, which is going to be these. Stay together. Okay, so pull those over here for, for the time being. Now on here, the middle pin of the relay, this is going to go to the switch side. Okay, meaning the side on the switch, which actually goes to the master driver door lock switch in the vehicle. This is going to go to the car side, the side that's going back into the regular wire harness in the vehicle. So these, if you're not putting them inside to drive a door panel, which I don't really suggest because of water and condensation, vibration, etc., it's not a very good idea to put them there. You're much better off just, you know, extending them, soldering, shrink, and shrink wrapping them, putting butt connectors or whatever, and extending those wires through the door boot and where it is you need to be working. Okay, so these four wires, which I told you are going to go to the power supply side, need to go to constant 12 volts fused, of course, for safety. I'm getting this 12 volts for my power supply. Okay, so those have constant 12 volts on them. These wires, one is for my unlock, the other for my lock. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate just one of the two relays because what you see on one is going to be the exact same on the other. So these I'm not going to really pay any attention to. Just gonna tuck them away from right Okay. So this wire is for that 
on the relay as well. So we're just going to concentrate on this relay. So the green, the black, again, going to constant 12 volts, which I'll show you with my test light. That's going to show up constant red. That's 12 volts. Now, what's going to happen is when I ground this wire, it's going to switch 12 volts to this middle pin and while it's also doing that it's going to switch ground to the lower pin 30 which is basically doing a reversal rest of ground so it's going to basically show your car that the, that the car side needs to be seeing 12 volts and the switch is going to show um, reverse at the same time so very similar to have how you have a power window or a power door lock actuator once one pole is going positive, the other is going negative, it's going to cause the locks to go in the one direction, like say for down, for the unlock relay. And of course, when you do it for the other relay, it's going to be the opposite, and it's going to make the doors unlock. And that's essentially all there is to doing a five wire door locking system. If you ever need a, a wiring sheet or anything like that on the site, of course, if you do come, come on by and buy something, these, these tech sheets we offer to all our customers for free. Um, Christmas time is coming. If you, if you just need some help, feel free to check us out on the live chat, ask us questions. We're happy to help.